Hello everybody, if you're new here, nice to meet you. My name is Jia, aka Yibisha11, and welcome to my channel. As you may know, I took a hiatus from uploading to focus on my high school final exams, and it is good to be back. I missed YouTube so much. As promised, I'm hoping to make more video essays and analysis content going forward, and I figured a fun start would be to upload the comparative study I made as a part of my film class finals. To give you some background, for the last two years, I have been studying under the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, and as a part of its film studies curriculum, students are required to research and produce a comparative study video on two chosen films and a chosen area of film focus. I made this in 2023, and the two films I chose were The Little Mermaid and Ponyo, with my chosen area of film focus being feminist film theory. In case you were wondering, I did end up getting a grade 7 in film, and out of all my coursework, this one was perhaps my favorite because, <laughs> what can I say, I love making video essays. So if you yourself are an IB film student, I hope my work is able to provide some kind of helpful reference, and if not, I hope it provides a thought-provoking viewing experience nonetheless. All that said, I am proud to present to you my film comparative study project. This comparative study will examine how two animated fantasy films for children address and explore female identity and agency. Feminist film theory arose in the early 1970s. It critiqued the representation of women in classical cinema as passive objects of the male gaze, and advocated instead for active representation of female subjectivity and desire. Feminists argued that women's rights had historically been oppressed by patriarchal systems that sought to subordinate women. For female identity and agency, described as the capacity for individualized choice and action to be achieved, reconsideration of female autonomy beyond heteronormative patriarchal norms was necessary. It is crucial to apply feminist thinking to children's films because of their influence over an especially impressionable audience and their perspectives of gender roles. The two films in the study, The Little Mermaid and Ponyo, are both adaptations of Hans Christian Andersen's 1837 fairy tale, and both attempt in their own way to challenge the cultural perception of women from Andersen's time as passively and domestically inclined. The two films contrast in terms of geographical and institutional context. The Little Mermaid is an American film made in 1989, whilst Ponyo is a Japanese anime created in 2008, while Disney's emphasizes commercial marketability and thus the maintenance of a conservative ideological status quo, Studio Ghibli, under founder Miyazaki's guiding philosophy, is more concerned with inspiring children to seek individual empowerment and human solidarity. The influence of feminism can nonetheless be seen in The Little Mermaid. Second wave feminism advocated for equality and awareness of how patriarchies oppressed women, an attitude reflected in Ariel's portrayal as an inquisitive, headstrong teenager who rebels against her father's control, possessing an individuality and self-will that previous, more docile Disney princesses lacked. Studio Ghibli, on the other hand, has always been feminist in his creation of relatable, interesting female characters for children for decades. Ponyo is no different, portrayed as an adventurous little girl who uses her innate magical powers to escape her father's over-controlling parenting, possessing unique identity and agency alike Ghibli's other female characters. While both films attempt to recontextualize the same fairy tale within feminist ideas of female identity and agency, the degree to which this is developed is determined by their respective institutional contexts. Disney in its classical era from the 1920s to 60s reflected the conservative ideology of founder Walt Disney, its adaptations of fairy tales perpetuating the patriarchal subordination of women. Its princesses followed typical damsel in distress tropes that glorified male heroism and traditional marriage. The Little Mermaid, however, abandons the submissiveness of Anderson's original mermaid, who commits suicide for her prince. Ariel is instead adventurous and rebellious, resisting her father's control by exploring beyond his realm. Still, it is clear that the film's attempted feminist messaging is restricted by what film scholar Dilek Yulisol describes as Disneyfication, the studio's tendency towards Western consumerist ideology. This can be seen in Ariel's design, her wide hips and narrow waist aligning to Western beauty conventions. This has been critiqued by feminists for its harmful messaging towards children, equating beauty with goodness. Nevertheless, it is a step forward in embracing empowered heroines for Disney, considering the era The Little Mermaid was made in, wherein second-wave feminism advocated stronger roles for women, and the film's commercial success allowed for future, more feminist Disney princesses. And while the film does end with marriage, unlike Snow White and Aurora, who are literally revived by a man's kiss and engaged in the next scene, Ariel fights to be with 
Prince Eric and both have opportunities to rescue one another. Compared to The Little Mermaid, Ponyo takes more liberties with Anderson's fairy tale that hold truer to feminist ideals of female self-identity and autonomy. While Studio Ghibli 2 has its stylized branding, the studio has prioritized immersive storytelling over commercial appeal from its inception. This is influenced by Miyazaki's philosophy for a film's imagined world to be depicted with realism, thus grounded in relatability for its young audience. Reflecting this, Ponyo's design rejects the sexualized female body proportions commonplace in Japanese anime, instead having natural and simplistic features that resemble ordinary children, with round cheeks and short, messy hair. Ponyo's inborn magic allows her to rebel against the control of her human father by means of her intrinsic strength, giving her more personal autonomy than Ariel or Anderson's mermaid. Moreover, Sosuke promises to love Ponyo for who she is. In Miyazaki's take, Ponyo remains a magical being rather than having to give up an innate part of herself for a man. And at the end of the film, it is Ponyo who displays greater agency as the one to kiss Sosuke. The film's happily ever after also eschews marriage in favor of portraying true love, as Miyazaki notes, as a mutually inspiring relationship. Both films show how patriarchy stifles female autonomy, however, they differ in terms of the degree to which resistance is shown to be possible. In The Little Mermaid, Ariel's father, King Triton, is depicted with a large muscular physique, dwarfing other figures. This disproportion is especially apparent in scenes where he reprimands Ariel, with the staging position, back turned towards her, physically and metaphorically showing his disregard for her will. The male powerful, female submissive dynamic is established from the start, with Triton's daughters performing a song and dance for him. A queen of the daughters of Triton, great father who loves us and named us well. Triton's prideful body language is juxtaposed against the coquettish manner of his daughters, whose uniformity strips them of individuality, and positioning in shells alludes to their objectification. Ariel's absence from her shell therefore signals her opposition to these patriarchal norms. The trident, a phallic symbol, is a key prop signifying Triton's patriarchal authority, and its use to destroy Ariel's secret cavern demonstrates the establishment of male authority through aggression. As he does so, shot reverse shots showing Ariel contrasting powerlessness highlight what feminists have called out as the patriarchy's exclusion and silencing of women. Ariel attempts to resist this oppression by leaving to fulfill her dream of living on land with Eric. While it can be argued that Ariel requiring Triton's approval in the end to marry Eric is anti-feminist, their reconciliation nonetheless acknowledges, if flawed, feminist approaches to facilitating female empowerment through supportive relationships. In contrast to Triton, Ponyo's patriarch Fujimoto has a lanky, awkward stature, subverting expectations of men to appear physically dominating. In portraying Fujimoto as a human sorcerer tasked with maintaining the balance of nature, where we are to witness his inadequacy to this task, Ponyo critiques traditional patriarchal Japanese society. Indeed, Miyazaki has stated that Fujimoto represents the typical well-meaning but inept Japanese father of the 21st century, struggling to maintain control in the face of a changing world that demands more equitable balance of the power between the sexes. As in The Little Mermaid, the narrowness of the patriarchal thinking mindset and its satisfaction with the status quo is reflected in Fujimoto's forbidding of Ponyo from interaction with the human world. Whereas Triton has a trident, bubbles are the recurring device used by Fujimoto to control Ponyo, literally encasing Ponyo within the palm of his hand, symbolic of the oppressiveness of Fujimoto's over-controlling parenting and, by extension, patriarchy's overbearing constraints. Nevertheless, he is unable to contain his daughters, and Ponyo's innate magical ability, in contrast to Fujimoto's lack of it, enables her to overcome Fujimoto with ease, succeeding in escaping the bubble by sprouting limbs and escaping together with her sister's help. Finally, the degree to which each film incorporates feminist ideas of identity and agency can also be seen in how other female characters are depicted. Ariel's sisters, as noted, submit willingly to Triton's patriarchal expectations. However, it can be argued that this serves as a foil to Ariel in the narrative, allowing her individuality and curiosity to stand out to young viewers as positive traits. The antagonist Ursula, on the other hand, is distinctly anti-feminist in the perpetuation of negative stereotypes against powerful, ambitious 
ambitious women. Her large figure and heavy makeup align with Disney's typical depictions of villains as possessing conventionally unattractive or brash features, and the physical contrast between her and Ariel reinforces the beauty goodness stereotype. Furthermore, Ursula's defeat, impaled by a conveniently phallic symbol, the splintered bow of a ship steered by Eric, is, as media scholar Laura Sells notes, the ritual slaughtering of the archetypal evil feminine character. Ponyo, on the other hand, includes a more varied cast of female characters. Ponyo's mother, Grandma Mare, goddess of the ocean, is depicted as powerful and awe-inspiring. Despite this, there is mutual respect and equal jurisdiction between her and Fujimoto, wherein Grandma Mare's empathetic nature counterbalances Fujimoto's well-meaning but misguided paternalism, highlighting the importance of balance between male and female authority in familial structures. Sosuke's mother, Lisa, balances her job as a mother and a nurse, both of which are duties that emphasize her nurturing qualities. However, she is not restricted nor defined by this domesticity, as she openly and vocally expresses her frustrations with others, particularly with Sosuke's father, retaining the capacity to be assertive of her own needs whilst being maternal. Ponyo's inclusion and varied representation of women who can be grumpy yet generous, frightening yet kind, deviates from The Little Mermaid, where, as Sabrina Besselam notes, the formulaic character archetype of heroes villains or damsels already hold gendered connotations. Ponyo's softening of these distinctions instead gives way for more nuanced and flexible modes of gender representation. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed that video just as much as I enjoyed researching and making it. If you are an IB film student, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below, and well, I don't know how qualified I am to answer, but I will certainly do my best to. As seen in the video, on-screen citations for clips, images, and articles were provided, and I will be including a link to a Google document of my bibliography in the description if you are curious to check that out. Given the nature of this video, I feel the need to disclaim that, regardless of what your personal opinion might be, all the research and content of this video was carried out on an academic basis, so please keep that in mind when commenting, and as always, keep it respectful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you for tuning in, and good night.